Um, I am so excited. This is our first in-person event since 20, no, first in-person summit since 2020. So this is just such a pleasure to be back in person. Um, we wanted to do a sustainability summit because so often people of color are left out of the conversation when we're talking about sustainability. And for us, it was really important that for the first time, we really um, let the industry know that sustainability is incredibly important to communities of color. And also, we wanted to, to let, to let um, everyone know kind of, you know, what designers are currently doing in the space of sustainability. So I am so thrilled to be here as people start to come in and trickle in. Give them a happy, give them a, a warm face, please. Tell them, come sit by me. Um, but we're going to have a really good time today. So thank you so much. And I am so incredibly grateful to be here with my great girlfriend, Tico Nejan, who I've known for years um, as a friend and a brand strategist. But over the past few years, she's done work as an emotional intelligence practitioner. And she's worked with, Tico, you can tell me the brands, but she's worked with so many different brands. And before we started talking about product or processes, I thought it was important for us to talk about people and how do we sustain people first, right? So welcome, Tico. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Brandy. <laughs> so Tico, tell us about yourself and your journey to becoming a certified emotional intelligence practitioner. Yeah, so the best part to me is that I love humans. Um, and I have two of my own that I birthed. <laughs> so I'm a mom of two. And then I have a wonderful human husband <laughs> of 16 years. That's the best part to me. And then the parts that sustain the life and the best part to me is that I'm an emotional intelligence practitioner. And I get the opportunity to do what I call um, solving people problems mm. for companies. That includes retention mm. and communication, uh, those turnovers. Um, and they had those problems pre-COVID, pre-2020. Mm. But after 2020, they didn't know what to do with the people or for the people. So it just became, I mean, even now I'm trying to figure out how to transition back to work. So I get to go in and help solve people problems. Wow. I love that. I love that. Now we have, you know, brands, designers, editors in the room on virtually, and we have so much going on in our new world. What are some of the best practices for us to take good care of ourselves as individuals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. I always say that uh, right now we need to really pay attention to narrowing our focus. Um, I know that sounds lofty or like or, or simple maybe, <laughs> but I think the the problem we have is we want to do all things at the same time, and so we're missing out. We're missing out on what matters, and so I say let's narrow the focus. Really hone in on. This is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, because when you narrow your focus, you narrow your senses and you narrow the emotions. Some of us are just running around doing so much and we don't know what we're feeling. But that feeling is ruining us. Um, when you think of burnout, that's one of the common threads you hear with people. But um, burnout happens because we've not prioritized our, um, what we're focused on. Rest should be one of those things. If, if you ask me, rest should not be a, a solution to burnout. It should be a barrier mm -hmm. to burnout. So you. What do you mean by a barrier to burnout? So, um, if before I get to burnout, I should learn to rest. Mm -hmm. I should learn when to pause. I should learn when to get off the computer. Um, I heard someone say, when your computer starts breathing louder than you, you've been working too long, right? And so mm -hmm. it's us being able to. I see you smiling, but you, you know what that feels like. <laughs> It, when the computer starts being really loud, right, or you have to plug it in, that means you've run a complete battery down. But we don't know when to stop. Even working from home, even though I believe it's, it's something companies need to really consider, um, leaving it as. But you have so many people that aren't taking lunch breaks. They, they've not seen outside. Um, a bathroom break. A bathroom Let's start break. start there, right? Like, because. Yeah. <laughs> or you're taking the phone to the restroom, you right? And so I just feel like if we narrow our focus, it can all get done, but it doesn't have to get done all at once. And if you work for a company that requires it's done all at once, companies hate this, but I say leave. <laughs> Find a place that nurtures mm. who you are. I love that. 
In your experience, as you work with some major companies, I'm going to have you just say some of the companies that you work with and CEOs and, a, and a, as an um, emotional and practitioner. What are some tips you have for brands on sustaining their teams? Oh, yeah. So um, when I go into these companies, I always tell them that I work for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I, I do consult with um, leaders, all the C-suite people that's in charge, but I also work with the actual people that make it happen. Um, and some of these companies include publicists. I've done everything from media to major influencers, uh, Toyota. Uh, I mean, every type of industry, tech, fashion. Um, but what I recognize is no matter what, the common thread is humanity, mm -hmm. right? And so even with the push for diversity, don't get me wrong, we need that, right? We need this inclusion. But we need to understand that what makes me the same as you is not because of our skin color. It's fear is fear. Uh, joy is joy, shame is shame, happy is happy. So it's emotions that make it. I don't have to meet you to recognize anger or to recognize being shy. Um, and so when I when I work with these companies, hello. When I work with these companies, um, I try to teach them how to. I don't try. Let me back up. I teach them <laughs> because I think I'm good at it. But I teach them to recognize that that we're human first. And so what does that humanity look like in the workplace? When it comes to relationships, work is a relationship. Um, and make sure I get to the balance thing, too. I want to mention that. But work is a relationship. The thing about a relationship is you want to be seen. You want to be heard. You want to be known, right? Not just compensated. So I know you're married to a darn good guy. But if all he did is dropped a lunch card on you, you know, a gift card or some flowers every blue moon, it's what does he make you feel like when you're together? That's what work has to be about. What do I feel like when I'm with you? Mm. That's a relationship. So I think being able to teach that, like how do we feel each other? Not from top down, but across. Mm -hmm. How do we feel? And then the other thing I would tell companies, if anyone's listening that run a company or you're in charge, do away with this false idea of work-life balance. Mm. If I spend most of my awake hours in the workplace or for the workplace, how is there a such thing as balance? There can't be. I'm awake most times, and then I'm supposed to do life outside of that. How, come, how about we treat work as a part of life? I'm one human that shows up to every aspect of my life, including work. And so when companies stop trying to push this narrative, now they're changing it to work-life harmony, work-life integration. Call it what you want. I'm one person. Tend to me. Care for me as I show up here. Because if I'm well here, I'll be well everywhere. I should be able to show up well everywhere. I hear an amen corner to my left. <laughs> what, what's this amen corner to my left? <laughs> I love that. Um, you've spoken to designers at many of our events. We've had Tico. You know, so often we go straight into the business. And I'm like, before we go into the business, can we actually meet people at a human place first? And so we'll have Tico sometimes open up at events like these or at um, our designer retreats. And um, managing a brand when you're, you know, talking about bootstrapping, which most of the designers we work with are, it's ch very challenging. What are some practices that, you know, black designers can really do to, you know, to stay focused and to keep going? Yeah. So as an emotional intelligence practitioner, I'm, um, I, I'm certified to administer an assessment. And one of the scores in the assessment is uh, reality testing. And reality testing says that I can be present and, and, and in the moment. Like I can know what's happening right now. Here's where it gets tricky for particularly creatives. We want to be so hopeful and um, optimistic, which I'm totally for. Uh, but in that, we have to see for what it is now. And so one thing I would say is, what are you working with right now? You're not working with the same tools as your white counterparts. You're working with what you have as a black designer. We are the minority. The reason HFR exists is because of the percentage that we take up space in the fashion industry and in retail. We have to accept what is. Another thing I'm going to say to all my black and other people is this, boldly, um, be OK that it's performative right now. And I know that's not popular, but here's what I'm saying. Perform until you get it right. And so if it's a performative act, don't shut down or cut off the connection, the entryway you get in. Because here's the deal. Once you get in, 
performance or not, because they're performing, someone's performing and doing a jig, once you get in, you now can authentically bring someone else in. So I would say, recognize where you are. So one of the things that's reality right now, reality testing, is a lot of this is performative. A lot of companies are feeling the, the pressure to include, right? And they don't know what that looks like. We shouldn't hold them to this standard that should have woke up or wake up in the morning and be woke. Like, um, no, you got to grow to that, right? But you do what you have to do. Just recognize what's happening now. The other thing is, I would say, manage your moments. And so we're trying to do so many things. And what I mean by manage your moment, every time, this is a moment. If I'm sitting here thinking about that my kids wake up, because I'm from the Los Angeles, they wake up and go to school, I can't be here. Most of the time, we don't manage our moments. Life is made up of a bunch of moments. So I need to be in control of those. Because here's what I do know. Life is going to throw you something that you have no control of. How many of you participated in COVID? <laughs> that came and no one got to say, I don't want to do this, right? So because life's going to do that, manage your moments. Emphasis on your. Be in the moment. Focus on the things that matter. Manage those things. Manage your time. One of the things we don't do well is manage time. Girl, when I tell you, we like to rush. I, me, I'm waking up three hours before. I'm sitting and sipping my coffee. That's self-care to me. You know I do. Don't, don't, get, don't inconvenience. Don't throw my schedule. Like, I just like, but that's self-care for me. If my flight, you know me in flights. I want to be at the airport two hours early because I want to sit. I don't want to rush, but really caring for our time, just managing my moments. And when I'm on time, I can do that. So I think for, for designers, I hope that helps. I mean, I know there's some practical stuff. Thank you. You're not in some of the, it's you and I. <laughs> I'm a believe, you know, yeah. that, that of course there's practical things about how we um, do our money, how we budget. But for me, I care about the human side. Because you know what's funny? You can make it and still be broken. I know so many people that have made it. They're your goals on social media. And then they're broken. Um, we've seen the uptick. Yeah. in um, not being emotionally well, yeah. right? And so prioritizing your moment. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's what I think. In the back, we were talking with um, American Eagle and with Lim Lim, well, with Terry and yes. with Melissa. Yes. And um, we were talking about so often, right, we're talking about sustaining everything, but we don't talk about sustaining people in the sustainability, you know, conversation. Yeah. And kind of give us your thoughts on how companies, you know, as they're moving to sustainability, the, what's the most important thing, which I just said, mm -hmm. but then how do they, how do you do that? How do you sustain people? Mm -hmm. um, you see people as you see yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and that means you have to see the well part of you. Because there's a such thing as this toxic work. Mm -hmm. So you have some CEOs, so because they're addicted to work, then they expect their teams to be addicted to the same type of work. Because they live attached to titles, then they want their teams to, man, to, to honor titles more than they honor self. I think we have to meet each other at the human level of what actually makes me feel ashamed? What makes me feel happy? What does joy look like? All of us at the core want this thing called happy, right? And so as I get to define it for me, really talk to the person. I, I'm interested, I'm always intrigued, I should say, when I get a call from a company or an email, and they say, um, yeah, we've tried this, we tried this, we had this one speaker, we also brought in this one person. And I'm like, how many seeds do you plant at one time? And then just walk away. I really like you in this interaction. <laughs> <laughs> so Brandis, you're off for a minute, but I like you. It, but think about it. Companies are planting all these seeds, but they're not tending to the garden, right? So when they come in, I'm like, oh, it's great you brought in 11 other people prior to me, but when you work with me, we're doing this for three months or six months. I don't want to. I don't want to just be a seed. Let's let's see some growth here. Um, the other part is we could overwater, right? You you can overwater a plant. I've killed plenty of plants by overwatering. So, so really managing your garden, like what did we plant? Did we pay attention to, was the soil good? Um, did we pay attention to the growth? Did we weed out the weeds? Did we take away what was killing us? Um, just being in more intentional, I would say, about the people. Paying attention to what they need, what makes them feel seen. And not just seen in the, again, the black way, white way, Asian way, uh, like seen. What makes my, what excites me? Maybe one person likes a surprise party. The next, don't surprise me, it throws me off. Like, really be keen into, if I like books, I want a book gift card. I don't want Chipotle. But, you know, I mean, like, paying attention 
to who I am just to me matters for companies. It's so interesting because it's a different way, right, of approaching um, the workplace. is a different way of approaching sustainability for sure. You know, and I'm sure a lot of companies are like, how are we supposed to do that plus achieve all these goals? But I would argue that taking care of the people, you won't have to worry about the goals. And the funny thing is, you most 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 people in leadership, sometimes they don't match the company, right? Like you see these progressive commercials and then you meet the people who actually run the company, like, wait, you wear dockers. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's not, it's it's different. Like it's it doesn't match, right? Um, but we have to really, again, get intentional about our word, too. If you say that you're a company that you're open to um, newness and you want innovation, then you better innovate. I'm going to tell you something. These millennials, because see, I enjoy, I tell my age all the time. I'm 46, right? So I'm, in my mind, I'm almost 50. That's what you're going to hear me say all the time. But the millennials that are working, I, the verdict is still out on if it's, if it's, um, if, if they feel entitled. I'm not going to call judgment if it's entitlement yet, but they're not playing this you just make me work and give me a computer. Th their attitude, and I'm wondering, should we have been that way when we were in corporate? Should we have demanded yeah. more? And so companies are saying we want the innovative people, but innovative people are coming with demands. And, and in my mind, uh, separate your heart from it, but you better meet these demands. They're holding leaders hostage. And here's the deal with that turnover rate right now, that's crazy, you know, the, the big, uh, what is it? Uh, Everybody's leaving, right? The quit. I'm going to call it the big quit because I couldn't find the word. But it's the superstars that's quitting because they can go somewhere else. So you should be really smart so you can keep your superstars. Now, that to me is a strategic move. It's not just this emotional, even though I love emotions, right? It's not this soft thing. It should be strategic that we care and take care of our people because we want them here. Right. And right. they're going to the competitors. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. They're like, Let me we, tell you. We lost them to the competitors, so yeah. I love it. Okay, last thing. Mm -hmm. Can you leave us with some practical things that all of us can do in our daily lives to manage our emotions? Yeah, um, so we always, we're always taught to pause before we take action, right? How many of you have heard, you know, stop and then take action? Think about it first. Th yes, mm -hmm. I say stop and feel what you need to feel because what feels like anger could be shame. Right? What feels like excitement could be impulse. Mm. I mean, you have to stop and say, what do I really feel in this moment? And, and you, here's the other one. Take a beat and re request a pause. So before I hit an email, I don't have to respond right away. If you and I are talking, I could say, let me think about that. I'm going to get back to you. But we always feel the need to act mm. so quickly. I say manage what you feel. Mm. Really tap into this feels good for me or it feels against what I stand for. Everybody in here has said a yes at least one time this week when you didn't want to. Because most of us aren't skilled at accepting no as a complete sentence. You know, so just really saying, this is what I feel right now, and I have to honor this. Even if the feeling, last thing I'll say is this, emotions aren't action. So we've been taught to get rid of the emotions don't, because we don't think emotionally because we act as if those are actions. Emotions are not actions. They're triggers or signals to tell us something's happening in me around me or to me that needs an action. Mm -hmm. So anger is not bad because that's not the action. What behavior do you choose mm -hmm. to serve the anger is where it can go good or bad. Does it make sense? Absolutely. So really tap into what you feel and don't be afraid of that because that's not an action. Fear is not an action. We tell people don't be fearful. So you know what most people do? Just try to avoid feeling fearful all the time. But fear is natural, yeah, right? Yeah. So once you feel fear, then the thing says, what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. Do I march through it? Or do I say, not right now? Do I pause? But really feeling, just, you know, I love feeling. <laughs> <laughs> they make me feel so good, but really being afra not afraid to feel. Pico, like, you have literally set the stage for the entire I'm day. Excited. And I'm so, do y'all feel all the feels? <laughs> yes. <laughs> feel it. Uh, thank you so much. Please give thank Pico Najon a huge round of thank applause. Thank you, guys.